Well, ladies and gentlemen, week eight of the college football season is here. It is upon us. And what we have this week, it's going to be a little bit weird. It's going to be a little bit wild, like it always is this season. The season has brought us so many unpredictable, crazy, insane moments. And despite the fact that there are no top 25 matchups this week, there are still 19 ranked teams ready to go, ready to put their livelihoods of being ranked on the line. You know, in the case of some, some are still undefeated. In the case of others, some are fighting for their playoff lives. In the case of others, some are fighting maybe for conference championships, maybe New Year's Six Bowls, maybe, uh, maybe even more. It just depends. So why don't we get all the way started here, okay? Let's start with the midweek games. There's two of them, one on Wednesday, another on Thursday. First up is Coastal Carolina, Appalachian State. Now, App State got blown out by Louisiana this past week, and Coastal Carolina continues to cruise. Now, this game is going to be a lot closer than many people think, you know. Well, everybody's thinking this game will be close. But Coastal, for Coastal Carolina, you know, with Grayson McCall at the helm and this offense continuing to click, you know, Coastal seems to get it all, seems like they're going to get it all together. Now, the problem with them getting it all together is, is I don't think they're going to be, you know, in the top 15 for very long, as the College Football Playoff Committee will be coming. They'll be meeting and releasing their rankings soon. And we know where Coastal might be. Honestly, if Coastal's like ranked in the mid 20s or something, yeah, like you know the 20s or something like that, when the first college football playoff rankings come out, don't be surprised at that Coastal fans do not be surprised at it at all. The schedule has not been very favorable as far as you know a, a nice schedule that is you know filled with big time games because App State shit the bed last week against Louisiana. Hey? Instead of this being a right matchup, potentially, instead, now App State is 4-2. They look they, they look like a team that, you know, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with them. And Coastal, you know, they, they just have to continue to win. Basically, my point is, is that they have to continue to win. Same thing goes for the Thursday night matchup, which is Tulane SMU. Tanner Mordecai is probably going to go off against this Tulane defense. Tulane has not been very impressive. You know, since that Oklahoma game, they it looked downright terrible at times. And I'm looking, I'm thinking SMU is going to keep going with their streak of good games. You know, as SMU, you know, they can't look, they can't look past Tulane either. They can't look past them, but they can't look too far ahead to Houston and Cincinnati. Okay, all right, all right, ponies, keep doing your job. That'll help. The number two team in the country, as we move into noon, Saturday, the number two team in the country, I will be looking at this game, it is Cincinnati taking on Navy as, as Ritter and company look to continue to dominate against this Navy team that I thought, you know, has been pitiful this year. It seemed like they turned it around a little bit, but they lost two straight games. And, you know, the run game for Navy hasn't been the same. The defense has looked awful pretty much the entire season. I mean, I don't know what's wrong with Navy. You know, they were, you know, just a couple years ago, this team was looking real good. They had, you know, they were they were just doing good. And now, look at them. They've, they've, they, they're lost out there. They, they, they've been blown out a couple times. They've had some close games. But in the end, Navy is 1-5. Not looking too pretty this year, man. Not too looking too pretty. So Cincinnati should cruise. You know, it, it just depends, you know. Again, this is a option team, by the way, so you never know in these types of games. I mean they kept maybe kept it close with SMU, so things could turn out the same here. We know what's gonna happen in Oklahoma, Kansas though, potentially. Caleb Williams, he looked great out there against TCU, and he looks to continue that hot streak that he got against Kansas. Kansas is Kansas, you know. There, there is an unexpected, you know, thing that could happen, and that is Oklahoma shitting the bed. 
but they, they can't have, you know, this is uh, this is a Kansas team that really doesn't have anything to do or prove or anything like that because this is Kansas. They haven't been very good in years, so, you know, so Oklahoma just needs to dominate this game. Like, they need to get past this, you know, this is just a simple roadblock. This is not complex. It's Kansas, you know, not complex at all. Get past it, move on to Texas Tech and at the month of November, which is waiting for you. Cannot overstate, you know, this defense also, too, has to get better for the Sooners, okay? They have to get better. Illinois Penn State is going to be a little weird because Illinois, you know, after we talked about them in week zero against Nebraska, they've basically fallen off a cliff with, I mean, they, they, they looked horrid in some of these games. They've looked very terrible. And the question for Penn State is, can they get their run game going? You know, they've been ineffective at times, and is Sean Clifford ready to go back in? We never know. We never know. We'll find out on Saturday if they stick with if they stick with Roberson or not, or if Clifford's ready to go because Penn State got off their bye. This, they should be well-rested. They can't look over Illinois either. That's the same thing they said, you know, about, you know, teams like Purdue. Can't overlook. Can't, can't overlook weaker competition in the Big Ten, okay? Northwestern Michigan, same thing. Look for Chris Bergen, a defender on Michigan, to dominate this Northwestern front. You know, he has just, he's been a nightmare this year for opposing teams. One of the best tacklers in the country. And I got to tell you, Northwestern, they've had some QB troubles. They've had some red zone issues. And that also bodes very well for the Wolverines. I won't be looking at this game either. Um not going to lie, you know, I'm thinking that Penn State and Michigan should take care of business, in all honesty, but the real big one here at noon that people have to pay attention to is Wake Forest Army. Yes, I said it, Wake Forest versus Army. I said it, I, I said I was going to talk about it, and here we are. And against the flex bone, you can't be certain to just stop it every time. I mean, look at Wisconsin last week. Wisconsin stymied Army in the first half, but yet Army gained over 200 yards rushing in the second half. 200 yards plus, and that included some stuff in the air as well. You know, it, it can't, they, they can't, you know, be the way they've been, you know, Wake Forest. You know, they're number 16 right now. They've looked pretty good, but Sam Harton must pick up this, you know, they got to pick apart this Army defense. Army's defense hasn't been really good this year, you know, at times, you know, I mean, Wisconsin just absolutely the struggle. We'll talk about them in a moment, uh, but, you know, they got to pick apart this Army defense. Wake Forest does. Christian Beal Smith has a run on them. You know, Army is a team that, you know, is physical. They can, they can punch you back just like they did against Wisconsin. And speaking of Wisconsin, they're going to take on the number 25 team in the country. That's right, Purdue is now ranked. And with the stunning win for Purdue, can the Boilermakers, David Bell and company, can they continue their magic against a struggling Wisconsin team with Graham Mertz still at quarterback? I don't know what's wrong with this man. This man, Graham Mertz, has just been looking terrible. He looked bad for most of the Army game until very, very late. And, you know, Wisconsin, you know, they're 3-3 three three right now, but do they do they have a shot at, at getting things done in the Big Ten? I, I don't know. I don't think so. I think, you know, now, with the way Wisconsin's schedule has been playing out, I think things might be too tough to overcome for them, in all honesty. And Purdue, you know, with the way they played last week, you know, could it happen again? You know, Wisconsin has just not looked great on both offense and defense again. Defense last week shouldn't have even given up any points like that against Army. But yet here they here they were. Physical game against Army. Again. Wisconsin's had too much struggle this year. And I don't know if Purdue is going to, you know, you know, keep exploiting those struggles or not, but Wisconsin has things to fix. You know, we we've been talking about it all season that Wisconsin's had things to fix and they haven't fixed them yet. Also in that 3:30 time slot, you know that that Wisconsin Purdue game's at a weird start. It's at two, 
2 Central, 3 Eastern, but the real big ones, there's three big ones I have bolded here. One of them is game day coming to Oregon UCLA, the biggest Pac-12 game of the year. This is the game that will decide the fate of the Pac-12. If Oregon loses this game, that is it. The Pac-12 is done good for good. You can count them out of the playoff conversation for good. You know, and we can move on and not have to talk about Pac-12 after dark anymore. We can move on and not have to talk about any Pac-12 team on this channel really all that much anymore. We can move on from Pac-12. So Kayvon Thibodeau, he's got to play. He's got to play like he did against Cal. He was relentlessly against Cal, and you know he, he's just got to play like that. If they want to stop DTR. You know, and this this is a this is a UCLA group led by Chip Kelly. You know, he's facing his former team in Oregon. I mean, you know, Oregon's been struggling. They they got to get style points now. They got to get those style points in order to get something going. In order to keep themselves in the top ten, they're number ten right now. Things could change if they have another bad performance. Things could change if they lose this game again. Pac 12s lifeline. It's on the line. The lifeline is, you know, it's fading, fading fast. So how about number eight, Oklahoma State and Iowa State? Iowa State's, you know, we haven't talked about them in a while. They've become dangerous again. They, they were always dangerous, but we just kind of wrote them off. Everybody kind of wrote off Iowa State, you know, with Brees Hall getting back in the form, Brock Purdy playing well now. Iowa State is back in the form, and it's been... I remember 10 years ago, almost 10 years ago now, that Oklahoma State was highly ranked and Iowa State knocked them off. So could the same thing happen here because, you know, the Pokes have just not had, you know, good times on the offensive side of the ball with Spencer Sanders for the most part. Second half against Texas, that's the type of that's the type of stuff that needs to happen. Defense is very strong. We know that. But we need this offense. You know, Oklahoma State needs this offense to get it together and play a full 60 minutes. They can't do that. It's gonna be a long, long night once again. A long, long night of frustration again for Cowboys fans. So how about Clemson and Pitt? Oh boy. Kid A. Can a pick it? Yes, sir. This man has thrown for 21 touchdowns and one interception. Pittsburgh is finally ranked after all this time. And Clemson's been struggling the entire season. You know, some the other the coaches poll has them ranked, even though they shouldn't be ranked. But Clemson, you know, just been struggling all season. DJ Uwe Lagalule has been playing terribly. The defense has played terribly. I mean, against Syracuse last weekend, terrible output. This shouldn't have been a close game with Syracuse, but yet here we are, and here Clemson was, about to almost have a tie game with Syracuse at the end. You know, I mean, things were just not, things were just not there, you know, for the, the Tigers. Pitt, if they win this game, it looked like they could, you know, take the Coastal one. You know, because I mean, the rest of the Coastlers look down, and we'll talk about another team in the ACC Coastal Division in a moment. But you know, Pitt looking like a team that can do what they need to do just take care of the ACC and go to the ACC Championship in a highly ranked matchup potentially. We'll see what they can do. Big matchup on Saturday, third, fourth highlighted game for me. Um, LSU Ole Miss has turned into a game that I should be highlighting, but I'm not. Uh, you know, so Ed Ogeron, he's out at LSU at the end of the season because of so many different things. There's been now there's been stuff circulating about him, you know, harassing women. You know, and he's not gotten along very well with the LSU administration on multiple occasions, on multiple fronts, on multiple issues, and LSU was just done with it. it I mean, th there's been guys who have won national championships in the past, uh, you know, as head coach that just didn't work out, you know, before. I can think of Auburn as an example. But this this has been this is gonna be messy and it uh, it's probably gonna continue throughout the week. You know, Ed Ogeron's gonna get paid, of course. You know, get that sweet sweet Power Five money 
for technically being fired, yeah, or rather let go. I mean, you can call it being let go. It's, it's basically a firing. But yeah, LSU taking on Ole Miss. Ole Miss is continuing to look good. They looked good in, in the face of adversity last week against Tennessee. We'll also talk about in a moment. And, you know, Matt Corral looking to continue a magical season thus far. And this is a big time game on CBS, you know, of course. You know, LSU has, you know, they, they got to gain some kind of momentum. And they gained some of that last week with a powerful run game last weekend. I don't know what they're going to do. What, what, what kind of LSU team are we going to get? Is this team motivated enough to take on Ole Miss? Or will Ole Miss just blow them out the water? Who knows? Who knows in all honesty? And last but not least, we get to 7 Eastern Time. San Diego State Air Force is the biggest matchup of the week. Unironically, West Coast football has, you know, gotten some big matchups over these past few weeks. And here we go with the number 22 team in the country, undefeated, taking on Air Force. Oh yes, I am ready to talk about this Air Force team with Brad Roberts, Zeke Daniels. I mean, this Air Force team is one of the best teams in the country at running football. They've run, they, in fact, I think they're the number one rushing team in the country. And, you know, looking to Brad Roberts, who's been playing lights out this year, he's at over 100 yards in like several games, I think. There's a QB battle between Jordan Brookshire and Lucas Johnson. Lucas Johnson played in that overtime game, you know, against San Jose State and threw only two passes, but both of those passes were touchdowns. Jordan Brookshire got the ire of Brady Hoke last week. As, he, as Hoke said, he wasn't impressed, you know, mul on multiple occasions. He looked unimpressed on the sideline multiple times last week, you know, so San Diego State has to contain the ground game of Air Force. It's gonna be it's gonna be a fun one, I guarantee you this, because San Diego State also likes to ream towards the run. And, you know, again, there's quarterback controversy again with involving a top twenty five team. And we'll talk about another team with it with with that in a few minutes here. But yeah, this is this is the second biggest game of the weekend in all honesty. You know, light slate of games. Look for this game. Find Find that stream because I know not everybody gets CBS Sports Network. Find that stream. Go get it. Get on this game. This is going to be a fun one. My other highlighted game in this time slot is Tennessee, Alabama. This is going to be nuts as Bryce Young and those Bama Jamas look to continue to win against Tennessee. Tennessee, we know, you know, last week was just not it was not great not great for the volunteers the way that game ended but now we know you know now we know that Tennessee can run the ball they can run the ball and Alabama at times has looked suspect against the run has looked suspect against the pass but I mean Alabama maybe quieted you know the doubters last week a little bit with that dominant win against Mississippi State, but I'm still not sold on Alabama just yet. They are number four. I don't. A lot of people are saying they don't. They don't deserve to be number four, and I get that. I mean, you know, they've dominated. You know, in every facet, aside from A and M. I mean, they, they looked like Alabama in every game except Florida, Texas A and M. So. You know, it's way more than Ohio State, you know. you know. Ohio State just looked, they just looked rough shot the first couple weeks of the season. And that was exemplified against Oregon, you know, by them losing. We'll talk about Ohio State in a second. But before we talk about Ohio State, let's talk about Meet Meet. The Roadrunners of UTSA have finally gotten ranked, led by Frank Harris. This is a UTSA team that is looking to run rough shot over Conference USA. And I mean, look for Louisiana Tech to keep this game close. There have been some close games with UTSA this year. You know, I've looked at some of these stats and stuff like that for, you know, some of these scores and some of these scores for the Roadrunners have been close. Not necessarily bad, but definitely close to where, hey, this looks kind of uncomfortable. You know, you know, 
obviously that they had a big win against Rice last week where they limited Rice to under to under 110 yards. The fact that I think it was only 102 yards for UTSA's defense against Rice last week. So they gotta keep playing like that. You know, there's big showdowns for UTSA looming, especially UTEP in November. So they can't look over this game. They can't look over the next couple of games. You know, UTSA looking to stay right. Hopefully, these hopefully these guys can do it. You know, they also might have a shot at a New Year's Six Bowl now with the way you know things go. I don't know how the New Year's Six Bowls work with two group of five teams potentially, but hey, we'll find it out soon. On Ohio State, Michigan is I mean, not not Michigan. I meant Indiana. Not we we talked about Michigan already. I mean Indiana. Indiana is a team that also has played a really, really difficult schedule. You can't fault Indiana for that. But they looked really, really bad in pretty much every game, mostly because of turnovers. And Ohio State, you know, they're opening up as a big favorite over Indiana. And all they got to do is get turnovers. Get those turnovers. You got this, guys. Ohio State, you know, can't look past Indiana. Again, you know, Michigan... Michigan State and Penn State are all coming up for the Buckeyes. So you can't look past this game, but you can't look too far forward. Okay? You can't look too far forward. Take care of Indiana. You're in the driver's seat, and you could be going on to do bigger things in the Big Ten. NC State, Miami. Oh, my goodness, Miami. Oh, my goodness. Remember when we were talking about this team early in the season? Yeah, things got rough for Miami. The Hurricanes, you know, no longer have De'Eric King. He suffered an injury that ends his college career, basically. And, I mean, NC State is red hot. And he, who's also hot? The hot seat. He's on the hot seat. He's not hot. He's on the hot seat. That's Manny Diaz. I mean, I mean Miami's 2-4. and four. They got a backup quarterback that hasn't played well. In fact, they, he played pretty bad against North Carolina. I don't know how that game ended. But Miami has had chances, and they've squandered it so quickly. They squandered their chances so quickly. You know, we thought we, we, thought we were going to talk about De'Eric King maybe for, like, Heisman and stuff like that early in the season. But no, that... that, that you know, like a Dark Horse Heisman pick, but no, not at all. I mean, this Miami team is just not good at all, man. Like, this has been a rough, really mediocre season for them so far. And NC State might be looking to run all over them, you know. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Not going to be really looking into this game at all, but it might lead to some hilarity, you know, just in case, because, I mean, this is the ACC. And things have been hilarious this year for the conference. I mean... Look at the ACC Coastal, hilarious. Look at Clemson, hilarious. The way they, the way they play, you know. So, it seems they can't look too far down the road, but they, they gotta look better. They gotta look better and better and better and better as big matchups like Wake Forest loom for the Wolfpack. Okay, all right. And second to last, here is USC Notre Dame primetime game for Notre Dame. We'll, We'll see what Jackson Dart, you know, you know, USC's new quarterback, what he can do. Um, I'm not really too high on this game, mostly because you know there's nothing really for me to talk about in this game because North, I mean Notre Dame, you know, just hasn't looked good this year. They've had quarterback problems throughout the season. At least Michael Meyer was looking good, but I mean other than that, you know, other than him and Kyron Williams. You know, Notre Dame has struggled throughout the season. I mean, they do need to keep winning, though. That will help Cincinnati out a lot. And, I mean, USC is not a team to, you know, look past, even though USC has been blown out and beaten a couple times, three times, in fact, I believe. You know, don't look past USC. It's it's going to be it's gonna be a close game like these rivalry games are. In a game that's not a rivalry game, though, the last game of this you know, pretty weak slate here is South Carolina, Texas A&M, as Zeb Nolan, who, I mean, just a couple months ago, looked terrible for North, North Dakota State, came in to South Carolina as a grad assistant on the sidelines, thrust into the starting role as, you know, South Carolina's actual quarterback has been playing like trash and, you know, getting injured, 
and I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the South Carolina team is. They lost against every good team they played. They beaten up who they well not beaten up. They beaten who they've supposed to beat so far. I mean, they've lost against Kentucky. They've lost against Tennessee, and they've lost against Georgia. Really, nothing to say there. You know, a lot of people are going to say that A and M is going to win this game big. I'm not particularly sure about that. I mean, it should be easy for A&M, but we'll find out, you know, we'll find out Saturday night, like we always do. Something crazy will probably happen. All right, that's going to do it here, everybody. I've got to tell you, you know, with the 19 games we have, you know, look for... Again, look for those 230 games mostly, 330, 230 games mostly. Wake Forest Army is one of the big ones. Got to look at this game. There's not much in that noon slate to look at, but look at the service academies, you know, Navy and Army, and see what they can do. And don't, don't pay too much attention to Kansas. Don't pay too much attention to Illinois Northwestern. Take a look at the service academies at, at, at noon. You know, at noon Eastern, Saturday, and then 3:30, you're gonna have to get three screens up. I know I'm gonna have to get. I'm gonna have to do something. You know, Oregon, UCLA is a big one. Oklahoma State, Iowa State is big. Clemson, Pitt is big. LSU, Ole Miss is now big. So don't, don't, you know, don't go too far away from some of these games in in the late window or in the in the afternoon window. Excuse me, and then you know late. Not particularly late, but late enough. You know, seven Easterns not too late, but honestly, another another Air Force game. You know, I mean, another service academy, Air Force. Look at those Falcons of Air Force run, and look at San Diego State play good. This is good. That one's going to be the second biggest game of the weekend. In all honesty, honestly, game day should have went there, but I mean, it is what it is. You know, Tennessee Alabama is also going to be interesting. You know, two, and you know, you wonder what Ohio State, NC State, Notre Dame, Texas A&M, what they're all going to do, along with little UTSA. You know, you know again, and then look for those week, midweek games as well. They're gonna be fun in their own way. All right, that's it, everybody. Y'all take care. Have a good rest of your week. I'm sure the NFL video is probably already out. You know, by the time this goes up, you know, because this is gonna go up on a Tuesday. Just so you know, I'm recording on a Sunday, so, you know, get this out, you know, get the NFL video out, you know, get the, uh, get the preview for the next week of the NFL games out, and Crown Jewel, like I said, on Saturday night, or rather Sunday morning, so Saturday night, Sunday morning, I, I don't know, I, I get my, I get my numbers and stuff mixed up, but yeah, that'll do it, everybody, that'll do it, I'll take care, have a good night, I'll see you soon.